Yeah. I'm your hostess with the mostest, and we in some type of co-op city on the Greenway, walking around, taking some pictures and videos of myself working out, because you already know that. Yep, there's people here working out with us. Yeah, he's coming back. He's coming by. How you doing? Yes, he's working out too. <laughs> Have a good one. <laughs> yeah, that was my neighbor. He's working out too. He's looking good and keeping himself fit. And for next spring and next summer. <clears throat> yup. So this is like really the the workout community that likes to come around and work out. Yeah, so you know. So these are just people that work out and keep themselves fit. And we do it on the Greenway. You know, people chill out on the Greenway and relax. So just come out, enjoy yourself. Before the snowflakes come. <laughs> Before the snowflakes come. <laughs> so yeah, this is Miss Lady Lifestyle. This is your hostess with the most is. And I'm coming to you live from Co-op City, the Greenway, where we getting our work on all the healthy, chosen people from the Most High Yah is telling us to keep ourselves clean, keep your house clean. That's what I want to talk about, how to keep your house clean. You know, you start in certain sections. All glory to the Most High, praises to the to Mother Wisdom that's giving me all this information to share with y'all so that y'all know how to keep your house clean and what to do around this time, being that you might not know what to do. You might not know. You're like, what should I be doing around? I feel like I should be doing something, but I don't know. You know, so this is what I would suggest. Suggest Work on your house, work on your home, the place that you come in every day, you know, and make that your starting place. So say that you go to the bathroom to brush your teeth in the morning, right? So I would clean up that first. Clean up your bathroom, clean the tub, do everything, put everything nice. I realize that less is better. So the more that you straighten up and put things away or take the things that you don't need out, it really seems like that's a better fit to start in the bathroom. Put away all your personal, you know, make sure everything's neat, clean disinfectant for the children starting in the bathroom everybody uses the bathroom so start there then i would say the kitchen put away things that you don't really use um throw away things that's old that says use by or don't use after this date <clears throat> so it's so much sun so I would suggest that you do that, right? Throw away those things. Uh, I used to clutter up the refrigerator with leftovers and things I was just refusing to throw away. Like, I got one more day. I got one more day. You know, in two weeks, turn around. So to be honest with yourself, just throw away things that you really don't need, like leftovers or freeze it. Do something like that. Okay. Then I would suggest that you probably start in the living room with memorabilia and things like that, wherever you're going to be doing the entertainment of yourself or with others, you know, I would say your living room, you know, and then your bedroom is the place where you'll be spending most of your time. So you want to be able to clean the sheets. You want to vacuum or sweep or mop or dust off and do all those things. So, you know, just in case, I would say take it like, you're going to get a visit one day. <laughs> everybody get that knock on that door, that visit. Not everybody, it says. But according to what these people think, everybody get a knock on the door. And we know that Christ comes like a thief in the night. So I would suggest that you clean up your house. So in case that thief in the night comes and your house is spotless. <laughs> Okay, so that's one thing, because you know Christ comes like a thief in the night. You don't want him tripping over a skateboard. <laughs> you don't want him stepping on a jack. You know, you want to get all that stuff up, mop and clean. You don't want his feet dirty. You know what I'm saying? Because they went through your house, okay? 
<laughs> so be mindful of Christ. Be mindful of the holy angels. Just be mindful, you know what I'm saying? Of other things around you besides yourself. Fair enough? All right, so you're going to take this walk with me. Take this walk with me. I appreciate you. All right, so <clears throat> I would suggest that when you think about that, keeping your house clean for at least unexpected guests to come over, I would say work on your body because that's another house that the father wants us to keep clean. You don't want to go to to the father and you have gonorrhea, clitoris, and all that stuff up in your coochie-coochie or things on your pee-pees or pee-pees or whatever. Listen, get yourself clean, go to the doctor, make sure you have your breasts examined, make sure you have your GYN doctor uh, test. Uh, make sure you do things like that. Keep yourself busy. You know, go to the dentist. You know, if you have allergies, you could spend time with getting an allergy test so that you can know what you're allergic to as well as your children. Um, there's always things to do, especially when you're quarantining or before we go on lockdown. Be prepared that you have to check yourself out. Yeah. So it's just people on the greenway. That's all. Um, so anyway, so that's what I would suggest, that it's always stuff to do, you know, during these meantime stages, and don't do anything, because you don't want the thief of the night to come, and you doing something wrong. <laughs> so if Christ is going to come like a thief in the night, I would suggest that you act like Christ is going to come tonight, like a thief in the night, because all these people are dying, so he's visiting so many people. So make sure you're doing the right thing. Make sure you're living right. Make sure you're doing the right thing because all these other people are food for the fire. That's all. They may not know it, but they'll know it soon when Russia comes up in here and do what he has to do. You absolutely know they know what to do then. <laughs> you know, but they could go ahead and pretend. They could go ahead and ignore. They could go ahead and do all of that. Why? Because the father gets to laugh last, especially when he know he's going to win, regardless. So, they always do that. Try and make themselves known. Try and make themselves so, ups you know, so you can see them. They just be fiending for attention. And when they get attention, they don't like it. They're always fiending for attention. But when they get it, they ain't going to like it. <laughs> They're not going to like it. Because they didn't read Obadiah 1. They got to read Obadiah 1. I don't know what's wrong with these people. They don't read scriptures, huh? Obadiah 1 is just going to pass you by, huh? This is not going to happen because you don't read it, huh? It's not like that. <laughs> so, I'm almost finished this greenway. Thank you for strolling with me. I'm always trying to keep active, you know, because that's the way to be. Keep active, always in motion. Keep your mind right. Keep your soul right. I would suggest that at, while you're working on your body, work on your mind. Start conditioning your mind, you know, with positive affirmations. And then you can also prepare your soul. Because these people don't know where they're going. They don't know where their soul is going. You know what I'm saying? And they act like they so relevant, but they so irrelevant that only Christ will know. You know what I'm saying? They so irrelevant. So <clears throat> let them stay like that. Because with all this that's happening, <laughs> they're going to need to know. And... uh I'll be on that cruise ship or that spaceship, cruise ship, <laughs> to our, our promised land. Or they can get up out of here if we're like here. <laughs> so, so work on that. Really work on your body, mind, and soul and change the view of it. You know, so if you're thinking negative and you're constantly feeling negative, you know, maybe you need to change how you're viewing your body. You know, maybe being disabled so bad is not such a beautiful, a beautiful position to be in, because you're telling the you turn telling the universe, the Almighty, that you're not happy with your body. You're not happy with, 
doing things like that. So, you know, you start losing things, you know? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, hey, peace, hey. brothers. How, How you doing? doing? You are ready. Uh, <laughs> you are ready. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's all good. We just here in the community, you know, making sure that we chill. We got to make sure that the 144 is safe. We have to make sure that the 144 is safe up in here. Peace, brother. So that's why I'm coming out to y'all brothers and sisters because it's real. It's about to go down. It's really about to go down. And I hope you got your seatbelts on. It's really about to go down up in here. You know what I'm saying? The father's not playing. Father is not playing with us. And we have to know better. So what you do in the meantime is clean your house. Clean your house. Clean your body. Make sure all the impurities is out. You know, all that. All that just got to go. Just all of that. And you do it to the best of your ability. You keep the commandments. You keep the laws and the statutes. And you keep doing it. People are going to fall, but you get back up. People are going to make mistakes because we're in this stupid society. But they're going to get back together again. It's already written, thus saith the Lord. So once you get put, thus saith the Lord, what else do you need? <clears throat> you know? So this is Miss Lady Lifestyle. I'm coming up to my building. I'm coming up to my environment. <clears throat> you know? Say, so don't did my hair, did my hair. Don't get it twisted. I didn't take it off. I didn't take it off. So just know that it's real. And as they, they said, it's going to get worse. Okay? So look for the worst. Plan for the worst. Because they said it's going to get worse. They, it's not going back to the way it was. So get that out your thick skull. It's never going back to the way it was. So you're going to have to adapt. or Well, that's it. <laughs> Simple. Yeah. So this is me. Going back home, I had such a good day. And thank y'all for taking a stroll with me. Thank you for taking a walk with me because it was very relaxing, therapeutic. And there's things that we just need to know as a society, especially the Abba Yah is going to do everything. I mean, I was going to do everything. So needless for me to say, we don't have to do anything but watch. He said, watch. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? He going to do this. He's going to save us. He's going to only one that's get the accolade. He's going to only one that's get the glory. Hallelujah. He's the only one that's going to get the glory. Hallelujah. So we don't need no Martin Luther King. We don't need no Malcolm X. We don't need anybody putting on a military suit <laughs> and, and, and walking around with weapons and crap like that to do anything. Stay in your house. That's your weapon of choice. Don't answer the door. How about that? <laughs> Thank you. So I'm coming up, going to my floor. You don't have to, you don't need to know. <laughs> yeah, so I'm here, brothers and sisters. We all have time. I just went for a nice little walk. I'm going to go right back in my home and chill out and, you know, drink some juice, do the things that I normally do. You know, probably clean some clothes and wash some dishes, you know. But to make a long story short, I can't wait to see y'all in the kingdom. I can't wait to see y'all see y'all in the wilderness. And, you know, and I know that we're going to be able to borrow and lend and all that with each other. And, you know, I hope that you can visit my tent and visit where I'm going to be living, setting up in the wilderness. And I can visit yours, your tent, where you set up in the wilderness. And we can have a, a nice bonfire and a nice talk and chat and look at the saviors all around and look at all the beautiful things that the Father had um, brought us to and 
we can we we know that we won't even have to deal with that hardship ever again and that oppression or anything like that. So I'm really grateful about that. I I pray that I see my son, even if I was at the staircase. He could be up there in heaven. I could be down here at earth. And we could just meet halfway up the staircase. Or he could just come down the staircase and I'll meet him there. I just want to be able to talk and love my son and my sister. And my dad and my cousin and my uncles, my grandma, my great-grandma. Like, there's so many people over there. It's like, oh, you gee, I got to come back. My sister. Come on. My older sister. She's there with my son, my only son. He's there. My dad, the one that birthed me into this world, is there. My grandma, that, the one that used to give me all great advice and wisdom. My great grandma, the one who brought us out of Augusta, Georgia, <laughs> to New York. <laughs> Listen, she probably was on the, the um, Underground Railroad. I don't know. She probably was Harriet Tubman. <laughs> The way I do things, <laughs> she might could have been Harriet Tubman, where my great grandma was, you know, rest in peace. But I do have more loved ones, even more loved ones over there, you know, more loved ones. You know, my extended family in North Carolina, they, the, the older ones that passed away, you know, you know, due to their own old age and stuff like that, it was not about the corona and none of the crap that's going on over here. But everybody passed before my son. Everybody passed away before my child. So my grief and my joy extends further than my son, you know? So he was that last, uh, in my chest, like, uh, that blow, like, uh, that was a blow, like, uh. Hmm. But I've overcame. I've learned how to still talk to him in the spiritual, but I have to be in the spiritual. And the more further I get into the spiritual and less about the physical, you have to get into the spiritual where you know you're talking to the Most High God and you know Mother Wisdom is talking back to you, you know? And you know you have the protection of Yahushua HaMashiach. You know, you just walk with that confidence you live with that confidence. You speak with that confidence. You know, when you just know that you have the, the most high Yah, first and foremost as our Elohim, that's going to fight for us. So they just wait. They think they fight me. They think they doing anything to me. They think they got... <clears throat> if they only realize <clears throat> that they just being recorded, by the holy angels. Oh, what you say? Oh, what you was thinking? We're going to write this down. We're going to write this down. And when you come see us, we'll talk to you about it. <laughs> That's why I said, how do these people have no idea? No idea. And the father's going to catch them by surprise. You know what I'm saying? So the more I stay home, and follow my Sabbaths, the more other people like, ooh, it's getting closer and closer to his return. And as soon as the ones that's chosen is up and out of here, So I pray that all my loved ones, my you know, friends and families that I'm concerned about is able to make it. You know, I pray I get that first call. Like, you know, the ships are downstairs. <laughs> Your ride is here. Pack up whatever. You know how they rushed in Egypt? You know how they rushed? You know, that's why they did the Passover fast. The unleavened bread didn't even rise because they was busy to get up out of there, you know, which I could overstand. But like I said, <laughs> I'm gonna be ready because they said they're gonna we're gonna be able to take all our possessions. We're gonna possess all our possessions. <clears throat> Again, it's a struggle trying to get in here. 
So I know I'm safe. If it's hard for me to get in here, sometimes I know it's safe. Okay, okay, I got, I got, I got. So you have had enough. You have had enough. I like, la 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 la. Did you hear that? <laughs> that was that. Click, 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 click. And you know, you know what I got. All right, it's all surveillance. It's all secure. You know what I'm saying? So I got making some food. You know, in this kitchen, I'm back home safe. In my safe, humble abode. I pray that y'all have your home safe. I'm back safe. And I just want to check this food. And take off this jacket. Because this is not that bad outside. It really wasn't that bad. I got so much stuff. Not that much stuff on. That's it. This jacket was just a lot. Toss that over there. Toss that jacket over there. I got to check on my food. Okay, it's looking good. It's looking good. But I better take it out. Now, right now, I'm just whipping up some type of fish. Yeah, now. I don't want it to fall. And I know it's hot. It's fish. It's and veggies. Fish and veggies. But I can turn that off. Woo! That's hot. Clear that. All right, so I'm home. And I thank you for the walk. I thank y'all for everything, and if you like this, like, comment, subscribe, I don't know, <laughs> but I pray that you know I'm ready for the exodus, and I pray that you're ready too. This was a long video, but thank you for the walk. Thank you for the time. I can't wait to see you in the wilderness. I can't wait to say, yeah, that was me. Yeah, hey, what's up, what's up, what's up? Come check me, come check me. You know? <laughs> anyway, peace and blessings. Until next time. Love you. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Enjoy your Sabbath. and Definitely enjoy your Sabbaths. I will. <laughs>